and I'm here to do a viewer request video she asked me what should you pack when you're going on a quilt retreat so I thought that I would share with you what I actually pack when I go on quilting retreats now this is going to be probably a two-part video because I'm going to do the recording of some of the things that I have here and then I will pack my car and I'll show you that in the morning I'm actually doing this video the evening before I'm going on retreat so in addition to that I have created a retreat checklist and I will upload this on my website and I will give you the link down in the description box below so if you're going on a sewing retreat the first thing you will need is your sewing machine now I'm not ready to pack up my sewing machine at this point so I don't have that with me but a lot of things that happen at the quilt retreat is that people forget their foot pedal. So even though you may think it all go together, when we start taking apart our machines and start packing up things, for some reason people leave their foot pedal at home still plugged in. So make sure you get your sewing machine and your foot pedal. Another thing I like to do at home as opposed to doing a retreat is I like to wind all of my bobbins ahead of time at home so I may wind say 10 neutral bobbins and then if I'm going to use some color threads for a special project at the retreat then I'll go ahead and wind a bobbin in those threads as well I would also bring a couple of empty bobbins as well just in case what I have planned doesn't work out I can always borrow some thread from someone else there Along with your sewing machine, you need to have the appropriate feet that go with your sewing machine. If you're going to be doing piecing, make sure you bring the foot that you use when you're doing your quarter inch piecing. If you're going to be stitching on lines, maybe you need to have your open toe foot. Uh, if you're quilting, maybe you need to have your walking foot. So whatever projects you're planning to work on, make sure that you have all of those appropriate feet. I don't have to worry about that because my machine has two places for storage and it holds all of my additional feet that I need for my sewing machine. You're going to need extra sewing machine needles. If you're working on a special project like a tote bag or something, maybe you might need to bring some needles also in a different size other than for just straight piecing. So but just be cognitive of what type and size of needle you need. And then I like to bring a sewing machine mat and this just helps to keep my machine stable on the table and I don't feel like I get as much vibration off the table when I use this. It doesn't eliminate all of it but it does keep it from moving. And then the last thing is if you want, you, this is not a necessary thing but you can bring your sewing machine carrying case. I like to bring my sewing machine in a carry case because I have my extension that comes off the machine to make it free arm. One time I was carrying it, it was kind of tilted down and it fell off and then all of my feet and bobbins were all over the parking lot. So I always travel with the machine in the case whenever I need the extension on the machine. And this bag just happens to be a two-toe bag. And I actually like this brand and company of bags. Just one disclaimer. If you are traveling with your bag and you're going and you're going to check your luggage, do not use the two-toe bag for that. Make sure that you uh, buy a size that's a carry-on because the airlines do damage these bags pretty bad. And I have about four of these bags in different sizes. So I really love the brand. Now we're going to go to basic sewing supplies. I like to bring scissors. Even though I don't plan to use scissors, it always happens that I need to cut something or I need to get a scrap from somebody and I don't have any scissors. So I bring a large pair as well as a smaller pair.
you're going to be bringing your thread snips. I actually like this brand by Ginger, and I'll talk about these. I'm going to record a video on my 10 favorite sewing notions. A seam ripper, and I'm just bringing an old cheapy one. It doesn't matter. I mostly rip with my Ginger's threads, my Ginger thread snips, I mean. And then I bring along my wooden iron. I like to bring some quilt clips just in case I want to clip something together. And then I bring my pin cushion along with straight pins. And then inside of my straight pins, I'll put a few pins that are heavier weight just in case I need those. And then I will also stick in a few safety pins. You just never know what type of pins you're going to need. going to go to rotary cutting supplies. I have a large mat inside, but I mostly only use this when I'm cutting yardage. So if I'm not going to cut any yardage, then I will go ahead and bring a smaller rotary cutter, maybe a rotating one. This one happens to be my 15 inch and I could probably use this to cut yardage as well if I fold it in fours. You want to bring your rotary cutters. And I like to, you can bring just one and you can bring extra blades. But sometimes I'll just go ahead and do two. So I know I got the extra blade. And you want to have an extra blade in case your cutter is dull. Or if you accidentally go over a pin while you're at retreat. And then I'm just going to show you one ruler, but you want to bring the various sizes of rotary cutting rulers that you need. I always take at least an eight and a half by 24, a eight and a half by 12, and then I take something small like this. So just various sizes and shapes of rotary cutter rulers. Thread. I take my jumbo spool of thread and then on a four weekend retreat and then I take my thread stand that goes with that. But you want to make sure you have plenty of thread and you may also need to have some color threads if you're going to need it for any of the special projects or other things that the retreat committee may have set up for you. You always want to have writing utensils, so take a pen and a pencil, and then I also take something to write on, either some plain paper, a pad of paper, a journal, something so you, if you need to write notes, you can do that. I like to take masking tape, you just never know when you're going to need to mark something. A mini design board if you're working with blocks. I just want something small since it's going to be sitting on my table as a work surface. And this one here, I have it where I can actually use both sides. Now we're to the ironing supplies. I already talked about the wooden iron. You wanna make sure you have your own starch. Sometimes the retreat will provide starch and ironing supplies and sometimes they will not. I always like to have my own at my desk so if those stations are full then I can use my own. So I have my starch. I also have an ironing surface that's here. I store all of my cutting boards, rulers, and ironing stations in this bag so everything stays nice and flat. I also take a water bottle. Right now I just have this drinking water bottle but I actually have a bigger bottle. It's at my ironing station and I'm still working but I would bring that so that it reduces the number of times I have to go get water to fill my iron. I actually like to have steam in my iron.
was that I do bring my iron. That is where this Panasonic iron comes in very handy because I'm just going to be mostly making quilt blocks this weekend. And then I also have a press stick and it's down in the bottom of here. So let me pull that out. Sometimes I press my seams open and so I like to use the strip stick to do that with. So that's also in here as well. And I also write my name on a lot of my product so that if somebody else has it, we'll know exactly who it belongs to. So now we're getting into the electrical supplies. And I'm going to first say again, make sure you have your foot pedal. Next, you wanna have some portable lights. I have two portable lights that I like to bring. One is on my workstation and I'm using that. And then one is hanging over there on this workstation. So I'll be packing those up when I'm done sewing for today. And then we're going into extension cords. So you also want to bring your own extension cords. And a lot of people will bring an extension cord, the basic white one where it has the very short length, like six feet. But I like to bring one where I have a lot of cord so that if the power is a little distance away from my sewing area, then I can still get plugged into the power source. In addition to that, I also bring this multi-outlet unit. Sometimes you may only have two powers in the wall and so you can't plug your cord in because there is no additional wall power. So I purchase these multi-socket things. Whenever I go on retreat, I make sure I take one because if there's two things in the wall, I can take those two things out the wall, plug this in, and then now we can plug six things into this. And it even has a USB charging port as well. I also then like to take all of my electronics. I like to take my camera, which is on the tripod. I take a tripod stand. I'll take some desktop one because I'm not going to be doing a lot of recording at this retreat since it's a card retreat. But if not, I'd be taking the tripod that it's on. Then I take my iPad, my, I think I said cell phone, and then make sure that you get all of the appropriate chargers and batteries for those products. In addition, you may want to bring a personal fan. Sometimes you can't control the heat for everybody. I'm actually hot flashing right now, so this is really cool. When I actually go on retreat, I actually take two types of projects. The first type of projects that I take are those that I'm going to leave in the car. I may or may not work with those. So I have three quilts here, two charity quilts and one for my great nephew. And I have the binding for these. Now I'll probably go ahead and take the binding in, but I'm going to leave these three quilts out in the car. If I do the binding and then I decide I want to finish those quilts, then I can go out and get those and bring them in. But if I don't want to work on those or don't get around to doing it, at least all I brought in was this as compared to bringing everything in. So there are projects that stay in my car. In addition to those projects, I like to bring inside three different projects that I'm going to work on during the retreat. So this time I'm taking just, I need to make four patches out of my apple cores. So I just have the pieces to make them into four patches. I didn't bring the rest of the top because I'm not going to work on it like that. I may not work on it at all, but if I just worked on this apple core, I could literally work on this just the entire retreat. And that's not what I want to do because I have other things on my to-do list. So I have a second project, which is some squares that I won from my gill. They had a brown bag raffle and I won it. Has 40 different red or 40 10 inch squares. Some of them are duplicates because the guild members just brought a square to contribute. And I won that so I'm going to do a project with that. So that's one. And then my final project is my year long project for my scrap quilting club. We're actually working on a pattern 
I'll be talking about this a lot later, but I already have these blocks pieced and I'm going to start piecing these blocks. And I have everything cut out for this quilt for all of the blocks that we're doing. And I can continue working on this quilt the entire weekend and it's a really good project because it has different blocks that I will be making. So it's like having six or seven projects in one. And then all of that is in here. So the three projects that I'm taking in side for this retreat is here. And this is all that I'm taking in as far as projects are concerned. Now, if you're working on some special projects, there may be some additional supplies that you need. Like if you're working on a fusible applique project, then you may need to bring fusible web. You may need to bring a applique pressing sheet because you are pressing in a public area. You want to make sure that you don't ruin somebody's iron. You, if you're working on something that's hand sewing, you may want to bring all of your hand sewing supplies, your hand sewing needles, thimbles, threads, beeswax, whatever it is that you need. Also, if you're using a project that requires specialty rulers, don't forget to go get your 60 degree ruler or your octagon rulers, your Tri-Rex tools, whatever those tools may be. And then I have some optional things that you may need to bring. I know this one will sound crazy, but an extra sewing machine with a foot pedal. And that's because I've been on about three or four retreats where someone's sewing machine has stopped working. And so when I go on retreats now, I like to bring a second sewing machine. Especially if I'm not in an area that's very close to my home, I'll make sure that I bring that. If not, then I can go ahead and go on retreat if it's close to my house and then I can have my husband bring it or I can come get it doing a break or something. But you don't want to have to leave to go get a sewing machine if you are an hour or more away from home. I also like to bring an empty large bag. This is an Ikea bag. I love the Ikea bags. I think at one point they were like 50 cents. They may be a dollar now. I can't remember what they cost. But every time I go on retreat, I get gifts from people. And then just in the usual whim of how things work, when we're packing to come back home, it just seems like the stuff never fits. So I always take a large empty bag. I take my sewing machine table. I may or may not take this out the car. I tend to go into those places, see if I will have enough room to bring in my sewing machine table. If not, then I leave it in the car. But this is what a sewing machine table looks like. It's from So Easy and it's on wheels. But I actually have another product that I use. We'll be talking about that in a minute. And remember, these are optional things. Other things that I may take in if I have enough room, I have one of these little plastic shelving units from Walmart. They have little plastic poles that go into these holes. Sometimes you don't have a lot of table space. And even when you have your own table, you may have so much stuff that your table is cluttered. So in order to keep my table from being cluttered, I may just use two of these. I may not use all four of them. And then I can also share them with other people at the retreat if they would like. Now, all of this stuff that I was just telling you about, when I go in, I have my own dolly. And I have my own dolly partly because I do quilt retreats and quilt lectures anyway so i have something that i can easily take all of my things in i try to make it so that when i pack up everything is going on the dolly at the same time when i first go in to do my area check i may take a bag or two in as i'm walking in i'll claim my spot and then i go back out and load up my dolly other things you may want to bring is some food and or snacks if they have a table that they're sharing snacks or if you want your own personal snacks then you should bring those so that you're not dependent upon the vending machines at the places where you're retreating because they tend to cost a lot more i also like to bring some money you never know if somebody is going to be selling something that you may want maybe there's a massage a masseuse there and you might want to get a massage so I like to have extra money. They may be doing a 50-50 raffle. 
you may need to buy food and the place don't take checks so I always make sure that I bring a little bit of cash and then I also bring a clipboard and I know this one sounds crazy but most times when you go to a retreat they'll give you some kind of an agenda and then what happens is you have your paper agenda and then as you're starting to work things get covered and then you can't find it well you can find the clipboard a lot faster than you can a piece of paper Sometimes I also take my own chair and my chair cushion. M matter of fact, I take it 90% of the time, I would say that I take my own chair just because I like how I'm going to sit, especially if it's a whole weekend retreat. If it's a so day, then I may not take my chair. Other things is you're going to need something to put the trash that you're cutting if you're rotary cutting. And originally, this is my trash bag here that I made. But I now sometimes will use it to store all of my tools in here as I'm working. And then I've just recycled an old Folgers can for my trash. And I've got plenty of these, but they already are at home with things stored in them. So I just use something that I know I'm not going to want to store anything in. I just stopped covering these because I've covered quite a few coffee cans when they are, were made with metal. Or a lot more readily available in metal. But um, now I just keep one plastic one so that way I won't be determined or be trying to cover it and make it look pretty. So I take these two things and then I stick while I'm traveling all of my things in here so I don't lose anything. And when I pack up everything has been put into this can so it holds just about all of the notions that I'm taking and something else that's optional you can also bring a bottle of wine <laughs> you just may want to have a night a, a little nightcap now and the thing I know this is crazy but we had somebody forget their own personal clothing. They were so intent on packing for retreat, forgot to pack for the clothing. So you want enough clothing to last you for the event. Make sure you bring your personal hygiene items. You want to have some comfortable shoes when you're inside. I like to bring some slip-ins so that because when I sew, I don't like to have my shoe on. So if, if I'm going, if my room is upstairs and then I got to come down to the main conference area to sew, I just wear my slip-ins in and out and I'll even leave my street shoes in the sewing room with my coat so if I have to go out for lunch or something like that I don't have to go back up to the room but I like to have the slip-ins because then I can get in and out of them but still is not walking around barefoot I like to take an extra jacket or sweater that I leave in the sewing area and I prefer to bring a hoodie and that's because you can't control the temperature and if it's cold I just put it on and if it's really cold and I'll cover my head with the hoodie and that helps to warm me up and the last two things that I bring since hotels do not change their or wash their comforters in between guests and that means that I don't want to use them so I will bring my own quilt and I will also bring my own pillow and if I think of anything else, I will add a slide in here to let you know what I missed telling you. But otherwise, I will meet you at my car in the morning because I'm going to pack all of this up after I finish sewing for today. And then I will show you how I pack my car. So it's Friday and I have my car pack ready to go. This black bag here is my clothing, my quilt, and my pillow. And I have my dolly. I have the bag up there that has to quick three quilts I may or may not work on this weekend so they'll stay in the car. Here I have a cooler. I decided to make a pot of soup. So there's my crock pot to keep it warm other utensils in there for the soup bowls spoons etc my bag here with my light mats and ironing supplies and then my clutching bag here has my sewing machine and my 
basic sewing notions, and then the green container has up there what the car quad is sitting on has my projects and some food and my white shelving unit if I need it. And then way up in the front passenger seat is my chair. So I am all ready to go and I will meet you at retreat. Hi, it's T and I'm actually at retreat. I've been here for a few hours, but I thought I would show you my setup and then just some glimpse in the room. I will not be recording anyone else in the room, so this is going to be more of a silent recording. There's my tower, my desk, and then underneath I store my bag for my rulers and cutting supplies, my shoes, my projects and other stuff I've temporarily stored there, and then my sewing machine bag and my table bag. I did bring my chair. I don't think I added that on the list. I think I did, but I did bring my chair. I have to sew this up. It's been made like this and haven't been sewed in years. And then this is the chair that they give us at the retreat center. So I'll show you some of my products. So on my projects, I actually have pieced my two patches into four patches and that's all that I'm going to do at this retreat and I am now in the process of pressing these seams so they'll be ready for the next step so I'll see you later <clears throat> It's tea. I'm ready to go to bed for tonight. It's actually about 1.40 in the morning on Saturday. But I just wanted to show you what I did. I did finish my four patch apple core blocks. So I have 16 of those. And then I'm still working on my log cabin blocks. And I need to put three more pieces on. And I stopped there because we're playing a game. And... We're calling it past the hat. If you fin if I finish four blocks, then I can get the hat. So I'm going to wait to finish those. But in the interim, I started paper piecing some half square triangles. This is the stack I have left. I think I have five sets here. I've done all of these and trimmed them. And these right here need to be trimmed. So that's what my Friday at the retreat is looking like so I will see you tomorrow or later today with more info hi it's T I didn't get a chance to record at all on Saturday but I did get these blocks completed needed quite a few for my project and I am now working on these blocks I need eight of these and I have four of them done so, yeah, I didn't get a chance to vlog a lot. We had a lot of activities, but I did not get a chance to work on my red and teal project. So yesterday we also had a card making class and we made this card here. And also made a man's card or a card for a man. And a peacock card. And other than that, that is it. I did finish paper piecing all of my units, so they're waiting to be pressed. 
I just found out that 128 of these are made wrong. They should be made with two medium or dark fabrics. So they're just contrasting fabric. So I'm going to have to remake 128. So I have 128 ready for a different project. But that's it for right now. I will probably not do any more videotaping here, but I'll do a haul at home. So I'll see you then. I'm home from retreat and I thought that I would do a haul of some of the things that were given to me as well as some things that I purchased. Keep in mind that this haul is going to be paper crafting related. So it's no quilting items in this haul. So the first thing I want to share is this Project Life book. I won this in a raffle and it has 50 planner pages. And they are weekly pages, but then they also have the monthly tabs along the side. So I'm not sure if I will use this or not, or if I will pass it down. We shall see. This was a door prize that I won. It's five cards and envelopes. And then what you do is you actually can place a write a greeting inside I can also add some decoration on the outside of these and make some greeting cards as well enhance them I won this as well as a door prize it's a little photo album where you can put pictures and memorabilia. I will probably give this to my niece and she can use this for her new baby. I have this glue gun and so I needed some refill so I bought one refill. Someone was selling this. They mistakenly bought too many. So I just purchased that from them. This is a case in here that will hold my markers. I have some trays that hold the markers and sometimes they fall out. So I wanted something that zips. But on the inside of this one, I put some other stuff I purchased. So let me take it out. But then you can put your markers in here. So I bought two of those. This is a prize that I won. It's a Stamping Up Curls of Christmas stamp set. It's the clear. And I already placed them inside. It was new when I got it, but while I was at retreat, I went ahead and stuck them closed so that I could use it right away. And then I have the toner ink marker. I purchased it. It's five dollars. These items were 50 cents. I want to do a page for my daughter and her dog. So I bought some dog ribbon. It's got paws on that one. And I thought I had something else with dogs. Let's see. Here it is, another ribbon with the dog bones. So those two were 50 cents. This was 50 cents. It's some color clothespins in the minis just to put as an accent on a card. Purchase some stamping dimensionals. This was a door prize. I won. This was a gift that she gave everybody when we came in. It was already in a bag. Along with some other items like these pens. A notepad. Some washi tape that has dots. It's like, it looks like this here. And some more ribbon things. Washi tape. 
got this kit here that has this actually I think I won with the planner so that goes with the planner the planner also had a pen some more stamping dimensionals I bought two of those and then I bought this for 50 cents some tag cards this glitter was in the door prize bag this little caddy was in the door prize and then this bag was also included as an attendance prize eat sleep craft repeat winter blues crop January 19 through 20 and then some other things that I bought I'm working on some scrapbook pages so I bought some snowflakes are in here it's very difficult to see they're on glitter paper that is silver and blue I can't remember what this sentiment is it was 50 cents but it goes on a page for Christmas pages that I purchased for my scrapbook that's already pre-cut is the smile and I can do this on my cameo I just need to I'm having difficulty with it working correctly so once I figure that out I can start making these kind of things myself but I thought I could go ahead and do some of these to get some pages done this one here is for summer sweets and I'm also going to use this for my daughter's dog because I took her to Ted Drew's to get ice cream this one is a photo layout for pictures it's called you're the bomb and then I got two birthday layouts they're the same just with different colors so here is one that's red and then the other one here is purple those were the only two colors that she had and I purchased purchased a Christmas tree where the Christmas tree is on half the page so then I purchased the other side so I can make a page layout and then I purchased this to go with the photo you're the bomb page and then st. Louis a cardinal on a bat I just want to use that for some cardinal pictures our baseball team pictures and then the lady who sold those gave everyone a free page set. You just had to buy your second paper page for 50 cents. So this one was free. Say, baby, it's cold outside. And then it has a sleigh. And I purchased the other items to go with this. And I'm going to use this for our Christmas pages. And this pack here, I actually got as a door prize. So, I didn't purchase too much. I actually went online to Stamping Up to purchase the items that I need. I'm actually switching out how I'm using inks. I've been using Memento ink, so I'm changing that out. I'll do a different video on that. So, these are the items here that I actually purchased at Retreat. And... I do have some Creative Memories photo books coming in because those are the only books that I have. And of course those have to be ordered and then I have to meet her to pick those up. But that's it for this haul. That's it for this retreat video. I hope showing you how I pack for a retreat has helped. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.